Hey kids, John here. Welcome to part three of my video series on the Earl D. Irons book of 27 groups of exercises. We're going to pick it up here in the third video on group 18. So here in group 18, what I'm really focusing on is two things. Well, three. I'm looking at the airstream. Got to keep that airstream going. But what's happening here is we want to set in the middle. For me, it's the fourth note, which is the E. And then we got to keep the airstream going steady. But when we get to the top, when we get to that high C, we need to learn how to relax and let it cascade down to get back to the C. And then in the very back end of this, once we get to that high C, we're just glissing straight down to the low C. I'm taking this at 96. I'd go three times through. So, number 19, 68 in one, four times. I don't make as much out of the hairpins. And I do a nice sweep up to the top note in the second half. And then an e easy fall down. Okay. <laughs> So, in group 19, it's beautiful. He sets us up for success in the second half of that exercise. All right? So, what's happening is you sweep up to that octave, and then that D is right there. You just, you set up for success because the da, ya, and you got a beautiful set on that high C. Okay? Genius. Just genius how he's setting us up for success and teaching us about sets if we're paying attention. Because here it is. It's right there. It's right there. Now, if that D is hard, we use that exercise again. Use that exercise to figure out how to get back and forth between a C and a D. Group 20, because I've been playing my way through the book, I've played all the groups, all the exercises to this point, so I'm not going to knock myself out on this. I'm going to cut it in half. Double bar, I stop. Okay? First part, I try not to get too crazy on this. I'm not going to go to fortissimo and a big smack on it. I just want it to be, be, be solid. That's it. Okay, so what he's done is he set us up for success by the first note we play. We play the E flat, then the B flat. The E flat is where it's a set in the middle note. He is doing this for us. If you pay attention, you'll figure it out. So as you get to the B flat, the first time you need to hold on to that as your set. You're always coming back to it. Don't abandon it even when you go to the low C. Okay, the second half, which actually group 20 is in three parts for me. The second half of it, or second part of it, again, we're being set up for success because of where, where we start. And I think it's brilliant. Our challenge is being able to make the really wide jump that's a two octave jump. And I'm not going to try and do this as a connected thing. I'm going to do it a little bit more separated. I do that as a as a tool to make it through the exercise because I'm not trying to burn myself up and trash myself. Again, I've played through the book. Ah. 
okay? It's, it's a hard exercise to make perfect and beautiful and pretty, especially if you played your way through the book. So being able to just simply accomplish it is really a great goal. Here we go. Third part, group 20, set in the middle. That's what this exercise is. It's a set in the middle exercise. It's brutal, but it is a set in the middle exercise. I do not again try to connect these all the way. Alright, so it's a set in the middle exercise. It's genius. Group 21 and 22, the most important groups in the book. Mm -mm. Yes, it is important that you get to these because these have great value. 1 through 5 are the most important because if you don't get those, you're not getting here. Okay, so 21 sets us in the middle and it's a sweep up, sweep down. He wants you to start slow and get command of it and then speed it up. I don't take it faster than 62. Should be easy and I'm trying to make it easy. I'm not trying to make it. No. All right, 22, bottom to top. Ooh, the most challenging of all, bottom to top. Now, here's the deal. I only go 96, and I do it four times, 96 and four, uh, because I, I don't want to have it gliss again. I don't want the gliss. I want each note speaking. I think it's a little bit more challenging and more beneficial when we do it that way. Here we go. And it's bottom to top, so if you need a reminder, give yourself a reminder where your set is. You see what I'm saying? So when you get down to the end, instead of at the bottom, Got it? That's how I'd approach this. Here we are. We've made it to 23, and it's a very difficult exercise to be sure. Um, you must have perseverance as a student. Extreme perseverance it requires. Okay, I think it does, but at the same time, play it slow a little bit. But once you get it to start to move, it starts to become fun. Um, first half, I, you know, everything's at 96. In four, I do the first half three times. The second half, I don't do ti 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 ta. I don't do that, and I also don't linger on that bottom note. I get off that bottom note and I bounce off of it and head to the top right away. It's emotion. Okay, it's emotion. Okay, it's emotion, and the faster you do it, the easier it is. It's just a rip. having us try and get that rip at double forte because he's worried that we're not going to be able to get to it because our air isn't going to be behind us. Well, if you keep a really good small air column, you can play all the way up to that nice and easy, okay, which makes it much better because when we have to go up to the E at the end of the exercise, we may need to activate more air. Okie croaky, we've made it to the open and now we have this thing where we're supposed to go from low C to the E and then back down. I don't, uh, I don't like to just bite or up. I don't do that. I actually get to the E and make sure I've got the E and then come back down. I put a little teeny mini fermata on the top E of that second half. So here's how I do this. And then notice how I bounce off my low C. This is my technique. This is my 
trampoline technique coming into play in this exercise to make it easy. Okay. Yeah. That bouncing off that C, and that was a little bit exaggerated, I admit, but it makes it so much easier to just um, do this exercise. One of the other things to keep in mind when this book was written, if you read the preface, he's talking about he got with the finest cornet players. I think he mentions trumpet players too, but he does talk about cornetists, okay? And so one of the things that's happening is this is still born out of a cornet technique. And so a lot of what he's doing here with the crescendos and stuff have to do with the fact that these guys are playing huge, you know, this is, you know, these are playing V mouthpieces. And yeah, you have to develop some kind of extra compression beyond what we have to develop. So you can play these exercises not very loud and, and get all the good juices out of them. Here I think it's exceedingly interesting the discussion that happens with group 24. He talks about the lip trill and he talks about the whistling on the trill. That kind of a with your tongue motion. And here is amazing information that nobody either reads or understands. The tip of the tongue rests lightly at the base of the lower teeth. I'm going to quote him again. The tip of the tongue rests lightly at the base of the lower teeth. He's already talking about where that front of that tongue is. In his pictures, in his diagrams, though, what he does is he makes it seem like the tongue's arches is, is, is actually much further back. Like, sorry, in this area, like this. Whereas, in our modern style, we're, we're actually arching harder, more forward. And so, this may be the real difference here. But he's talking about syllables... I, 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 he's talking about that, okay? So, tongue is involved here on this next one, on group 24, is what he's saying. So, 24 introduces the gliss, full-on, big time. And this is also a very valuable exercise, and that's why I take the other ones and make sure that they're actual 16th note exercises and not gliss exercises, because here we have an exercise on the gliss. He talks about that trill at the top. If the trill is a problem on, like, a high note, whatever that note be, may be, let's say it's the C. So, do the bending exercise, D down. And then bounce it. Wow, look at that big movement I'm making. Ah, it makes it easy, doesn't it? Now, even it out. Now, make it fast. Okay? You can always work on the trill all by itself. Now, let's examine the exercise. Ha, 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 what's he doing? He's setting in the middle. There it is. He's setting in the middle. Again, he's helping us understand how to sweep up by having a set in the middle all right although he has us then and ultimately sweep all the way from the bottom back to the top <laughs> done <laughs> right so on the C It is okay so it's really actually a very easy exercise oddly enough um but it's important for the gliss the trill down to the bottom out of the top and then you know and then control after that i hope some of this information was helpful and let's take a look at part four <laughs>